Six Dr. Seuss books, including And To Think I Saw It on Mulberry Street and If I Ran the Zoo, will stop being published because of racist and insensitive imagery. These books portray people in ways that are hurtful and wrong, Dr. Seuss Enterprises told the Associated Press in a statement that coincided with the late author and illustrator's birthday. President Biden announced on Tuesday that he anticipates the U.S. will have enough supply of COVID-19 vaccine to inoculate every American adult by the end of May. The timeline is shortened from the administration's previous pledge to have enough doses for every adult by the end of July. However, it's not clear that every U.S. adult who wants a coronavirus vaccine will be able to get a shot that soon. City Council President Gina Louise Schiara announced Tuesday that she's running for mayor becoming the first candidate for the position since Mayor David Narkowitz announced in January that he would not seek re-election. In announcing her candidacy, Skiara, 46, emphasized the need for an equitable recovery from the pandemic and highlighted addressing climate change and racial and social justice as priorities of her campaign. I'm Theo, and you're watching Hands Up, Swim and Dive Edition. Y'all ready for this? While COVID has prevented many sports from competing and having seasons, swimming and diving has been able to get extra training in while preparing for their season, which will be happening this year. However, like many things in this day and age, the meets will be virtual, each team competing in their home pool. We talked to swim captains Ruth Geller, Oliver Shallett, and Cecilia Ripley, as well as coach Jacob Wingfield to understand how the virtual meets are taking place and the goals for the season. You guys have an extra month of preseason training this year. How is that going to affect your season? So that'll just make us have some more practices to get us into the season and get some more good times going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's really great because we are actually outnumbered with new swimmers to old swimmers. So it's great because they get a chance to try it out. It definitely helps with the team dynamic, you know, getting everyone feeling comfortable with each other. So. That's going to be a big plus, um, and it gets everyone used to the new atmosphere. You know, there's a lot of different things we have to do. So, yeah. so how is the team competing this year? We're going to be competing with virtual meets this year. Yeah, we have no Western Mass championships or anything like that. So far, for other teams that I've been swimming for, have looked like basically it's just the whole team is the only person that's only people that are on the deck, um, and there's like an official on each pool deck, so you know it's legal. And then you basically race against either yourself or your own teammates. Um, and then all of the times are like compiled together at the end. So you're not actually racing against another team unless you consider the fact that your times are just going to be put against each other at the very end. So finally, what are the team's goals for this season? We have a bigger team than we've had in like any of the past few years. So I think the goal right now is to get the freshmen really involved so that they can have a really strong team um, for their sophomore, junior, senior seasons. I think the most important thing is that everyone's having a good time. You know, there aren't the end of season meets to sort of strive for, but we're just going to get them in the swing of things and hopefully make them want to come back next year when we're gone. Will the swim meets feel less competitive considering there are no in-person opposing teams? With swimming, it really has always been about competing with yourself, um, trying to get your personal best times. And while sometimes it does help to have somebody else pushing you um, in another lane, I think that it will just be a unique situation where people either are being pushed by 
We're going to have to be more strategic with who's swimming events on our own teams to try to get competition with the, within our own team while still competing against the other teams and just really like working and focusing on ourselves and knowing that if we do our best that we can compete with the other teams regardless of what they're doing. Thanks for watching. Be sure to watch again next week. This is taking it to the streets. Democrats in Congress are racing to meet a mid-March deadline for President Biden's coronavirus relief package before existing benefits expire. The package includes $1,400 checks for individuals with income below $75,000 a year, along with other financial aid for low-income workers. This week we hit the streets of downtown Northampton to hear people's perspectives on the stimulus package that is currently making its way through Congress. Do you think it's been taking too long for these stimulus checks to be come out? Yes, yeah, because they are people who really, really do need them that are hurting out there. Why do you think it's been taking too long? <laughs> uh, probably politics. Do you believe that the stimulus checks go far enough in helping those during the pandemic? I don't think they go far enough. I think they help, but I think people need a lot, a lot more. Why is that? I just feel like a lot of people are struggling. A lot of people are, um, you know, the poverty level is going higher. And um, I just think I just think people need a lot of help right now. What is your opinion on the Democrats not prioritizing bipartisan support on this bill? I think since a lot of them ran their campaign on supporting it, it's hypocritical. I think it's annoying because there's a lot of people out there who really need help. And they're they're using a lot of the money for like military stuff and stuff that I don't personally think we need to be spending that much money on. Um, I think they should prioritize people who are struggling. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Last Tuesday, social media accounts on Instagram and Facebook surfaced, promoting a non-existent white student union at JFK Middle School, causing citywide outrage and condemnation. The group was created in response to a video released by JFK principal Desmond Caldwell that highlighted the history of the Confederate flag and urged students to refrain from wearing such symbols during virtual class as it made others feel unsafe. I want to be clear. I'm asking that the Confederate flag not be present in virtual or in-person school. I make this request not to step on your rights, but to help create a safer and less distracting learning environment. In one of its first posts, group creators called Caldwell an anti-American tyrant, claiming their constitutional rights were being infringed in the community. According to a post on the Facebook page, the anonymously led group promoted itself as an advocacy group, stating, We cannot stress enough that our student union is a civil rights organization, end quote. In a text interview with the transcript, however, the admins of the page expressed their belief that history, quote, ignores the unfathomable white excellence and that race is in fact corrosive to the minds of young people and is causing whites to be raised to hate themselves, end quote. White student union pages gained traction in 2015 where the Washington Post found over 30 pages created within a several day period. News of this page's creation hit mainstream media shortly after, resulting in Mr. Caldwell and Superintendent Dr. John Provost receiving messages from around the world. A protest was also held in opposition to the page, where those attending sang chants and held signs promoting the Black Lives Matter movement. The transcript spoke to Mr. Caldwell for his thoughts on the events. So we actually, uh, usually right after the incident, we get together with students. So we have a, we have a flex block, which is um, acting like a, an advisory in a sense. And so today we immediately shared information. This is what's happening. This is, you know, why it's happening. And have those conversations with our students. That'll continue into next week. Uh, we'll also have some affinity groups. Uh, where we're going to have deeper conversations, uh, share some information with students. So we're, we, anytime we have an incident, we continue. More than a week has passed since the creation of the page, and the identity of the page's creator has yet to be revealed. While certain information remains unknown, the district now shifts focus to supporting students and faculty within the community. In an interview with the transcript, Dr. Provost stated that he had reached out to the FBI 
and Justice Department for community resources to deal with the situation. Provost also emphasized certain pieces were missing from the larger narrative. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. The transcript will continue to cover the story as it develops. I'm Stefan Johnson, and thank you for watching.